Top of the morning, boys. Doing something a little different here. We're using the GoPro today because it's a little versatile on my trip. I woke up early this morning because I'm en route to pick up parts. That's how dedicated I am to you guys. It's uh, four and a half hours there, pick up the parts, four and a half hours back. And I woke up at 3 a.m. to do it. Just for a little giggles here, here's a top comment from last video. Got her. And you know, just for fun, here's the newest subscriber as well. So in case you guys don't know, we do have a Boosted Lifestyle public page where you can post your car and whatever random shit you want to talk about. It's on Facebook. Um, the link should be down below. Or you just search up Boosted Lifestyle public page. I'll accept you. And uh, let's just be a big family on Facebook too. Made it to Mill Run. Record time. I think it's only like 8 in the morning right now. But I think we're going to see Nick and Kurt here now. Just got to pull around to the back so we can get that orange mean machine transmission. I'll see you, Kurt. Y'all need anything cut or... Uh... <laughs> there he is, just muscling it. Yeah. Here comes the transmission. Yeah. It's not even heavy for Nick. No. That must be a fake tranny. Yeah. Nothing in it. <laughs> Atta boy. Put the muscles to work. Oh yeah. Perfect. It's breathing hard now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> There we go. We're using parts. <laughs> this is the cold side kit off of the blue Mustang, but Adele's building a Mustang the exact same as mine. So it should like bolt right up to his car. Chevy, those things are only good for LS motors. What? <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Good, good, you? Look at that thing. Yeah. I'm not gonna use that one, but. Uh, you can sell it back to Nick. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got some shop shirts. Local to Edmonton. And then, uh, yeah, we ended up getting this intake manifold. So we should be able to put this in here and then face this backwards and have a little bit more wiggle room between um, the throttle plate and that intercooler besides like going out the front with the other intake manifold. So this should work a lot better. So that was one of our subscribers, Andy. He actually came on our live stream and was like, hey, I heard you need an intake manifold. And then we got that one. That one should be able to be put on backwards and then go up to our air to water where we need it. Hopefully we can make like a little S bend to get down to where we need it. And uh, cause it is angled a little bit. So Princess Auto and Harbor Freight are basically like the same store. So that's why I'm here. Cause if you guys been to Harbor Freight or Princess Auto, you know. Cheap baby. I got hose. I got hose. So. $1,500 later, and now I gotta pull around to the side of the building and get our new bandsaw. I knew that was gonna happen today, I think. It's kind of a needed thing, but now we can do five inch downpipe, I guess. I also ended up with a bunch of knick-knacky little things like uh, sanding discs for the grinder, a couple of little bolt kits. These are always handy to have, just to have the, like, the bolt and the nut for random assortment of things. And then the P-clamps for tying stuff up and some zip ties. The typical shit that you don't want to go run to the parts store for when you just need like one of something. That was a bigger pallet than expected. Our transmission barely fits back here now. We've got a pilot vehicle that we just followed for three kilometers and we didn't come across any traffic, any construction work, I should say. And now there's a couple little vehicles right here ripping up road that we're passing. And if that's the only thing we pass, I'm gonna be pissed. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but all on the side of the road and all across the entire road is just loose rock chips. I'm not sure who decided it, but they fill the roads in with rock chips. So for three quarters of the year, you're getting windows smashed out. Like, for example, this truck, for example, this truck, 1500 kilometers on it, big rock chip in the window. We're back in town already and it's only 346. Admittedly, I'm having a little trouble adapting to this GoPro because I can't see myself in it and I'm like, uh, uh, and then I keep thinking about that I can't see myself in it and then I don't know what to say and then I forget what I said. 
penis. All right, so here's the new bandsaw. I'm definitely gonna need a hand in getting this out because it says it's 130 kgs, which times by two is 260 plus 26, 286 pounds. So I'm not gonna be able to maneuver that by myself because it's all one piece. It's actually all one piece and you can't uh, un like separate it. So I'll have to get a hand doing that, but here's our new intake manifold here as well. It is this uh, Edelbrock Victor manifold, I believe that's what it's called. It comes with fuel rails already. Um, I might have to make my own fittings. The one thing I don't like about these fuel rails is that they're actually NPT instead of ORB, which most rails are. And then we also have this Holly elbow on top of the intake. So the measurement we needed to achieve, the I measured from the valley cover up to the bottom of this and it was seven inches, I believe. So if we grab a tape measure right here, and we measure from the valley cover to the bottom of that, we are at six and three quarters. So even if we have to add a small um, one inch or two inch spacer underneath this between these two, I think this will still be our best bet. Also, we might get really lucky. I was gonna do dash eight feeds anyways. These two fittings right here are dash eight feeds. So we'll Y into those and then they come to the back here and there was a regulator here at one point and I think our Magnafuel regulator might fit back there. So this will actually be on the front of the engine right here. We'll, uh, if we do mount it there, we'll just uh, probably come up from these bolts right here and build a bracket to rest that on just so the weight isn't on the rails. But it depends which way the rails tip. Let's just see how it fits. I'll add some fitting to this regulator and then I'll just uh, dry test it right now. Dang, we might be golden pony boy, look at that. Fits in there, I don't think it's uh, offsetting the rails too much here. Uh, hopefully our DECA injectors still fit in here, I haven't tested that yet. And then we need some uh, intake manifold gaskets as well. But, like I said, the next project is going to be to get this out of the back of the truck so we can get our transmission out, so we can put our bell, bell housing on that. So, I feel like I can be pretty MacGyver-esque sometimes. And this is either gonna work or it's not gonna work. None, no other options except for those two options. So either we're gonna break it or probably not break it. Sometimes you just gotta be a fart smeller and think like the cat's ass. And then you get it, pretty much, exactly like that. Well, I managed to get it this far on its side. It looks like whatever was here was leaking a little bit. That hose is a little bit crushed as well. Probably minor, that's probably some of the coolant stuff that uh, feeds onto the blade itself. Cause there's like a coolant reservoir down here at the bottom. So uh, try and get this cage thing off now. The only way I know how. As you can see here, this is the coolant feature I was talking about. Just puts a little drip on top of the blade there to keep that nice and lubricated so it doesn't get too hot and it cuts a lot better. Um, you see some significant differences between this one and that little cheap one is, well, they were both cheaper on the cheaper end, but um, this one's much better. This one can cut up to seven inches from here to here is also seven inches. Um, this one can only do four and a half. You can see the distance from here to here is really small. What are you on a dirt wheel, though? This one has a hydraulic cylinder here for damping how fast this comes down. It's got four speeds of variability on the motor. This one only has three. This whole tray right here is meant to catch coolant and then it drops back down into the tank here, pumps back out into uh, this piece right here. So as you can see, there's gonna be some significant differences here. 
I'm super stoked on this. This is gonna bring our fab game to the next level, I think. I did buy a new blade for this already. This one is like 10 or 12 teeth per inch. I bought one that's like 18, which should be a lot better for stainless steel. And then, uh, yeah, slow and smooth cutting. One thing I hated about the other bandsaw was that the angle it used to come down on, it used to like pull the blade because it was only a half inch blade. I'm hoping that this three quarter blade rec rectifies that. Because when you're trying to build stuff and it's at a two degree cut, nothing lines up the way you measured it. All right, so I don't have the coolant hooked up, but I'm gonna try this piece of stainless and see how it cuts. Also, this is really nice, this little nice spinning majiggy versus this little piss flap over here on this one. Let's just turn it on, see what happens, I guess. This uh, blade is kind of aggressive and I don't know how these settings work to be honest. If it ever makes its way down there again maybe. Poor blade. Probably got chunks taken out of it already. This blade is garbage for uh, stainless because the teeth are too big, I believe. Alrighty, moving past that, I realized that the blade is like super shit and super aggressive for our setup, so that's not gonna be any good. We're moving to our transmission um, stand right here, ideally. Real sick transmission stand, it's a little loosey-goosey. Stick that there. It's a good thing about using a GoPro right now. But we're gonna grab our orange bastard. Oh, there it is. So, as you can see, the bell housing has been cut off, and that is because this bell housing will bolt to the oil pump right now. Um, the pump was ruined in this, along with a thrust washer, but we think it was when we Got in the accident, the car crumpled up, the drive shaft actually pushed in the backside, and then it uh, drove everything forward, knocking out the thrust washer here and then the pump as well. Which makes me a little bit curious about our engine. I don't know if I hurt the thrust washer washers in that either. We'll probably just send it anyways, but I should cut open the oil filter that was with it. I still have it over there. I just didn't get around to cutting it open. I think I'm gonna try and uh, put this bell housing on here. Oh, look at that, we're getting more legitter. We got SFI numbers on our bell housing now, crazy. You guys gotta let me know how this GoPro thing is going. So now we got SFI numbers here, we got SFI numbers on our flywheel. This is cray cray. Um, before I get any further, I think I'm gonna cut open that oil filter that I said I was gonna cut open earlier that I didn't do it, but I'm gonna do it now. Just to make sure that motor is good. If not, Virginia must steal your engine without telling you and then be like, oop, uh, yours was wealthy when I bought it. Nah. Let's just check it anyways. This doohickey right here, cat's ass. It's for uh, cutting oil filters, makes it super easy. Just kind of like jam it in there. Do one of these thingamajiggers when you spin it up. And then you do a twisty. Spin it up some more. One more time. There it goes. And if you know me, I generally use whatever oil filter is on sale when I go get them. Probably shouldn't do that if I build an engine, but that's what I do right now. There's definitely a little bit of shinies in there. Let me show you. A little bit of shinies. See it in there? Oh yeah, watch me flip it over here when I like change sides. 
Some shinies in there, for sure some shinies. Looks mainly like aluminum though, it doesn't look like too much brass. It's probably just piston rings and shit that I file or the valve covers. You know what, I'm just gonna send it anyways. Let's not think about it too much. This motor really technically only has to make a couple more passes anyways. So let's just send it home. I'll send it a proper burial in my engine diaper. How about that? How about that? Catch me out on the track broken down. How about that? Wouldn't be the first time, actually. Now, Kurt, the guy who was at Mill Run earlier in the video, he actually gave us two converters last time we were at the track before we crashed to try because we couldn't get up on the converter very good with our old one. So the two converters are here. We've got to pick between one of them and then uh, just jam it in there, see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we'll try the other one. Apparently they both stall out about uh, uh, 4,200 RPM. So we'll put one in, see what happens. And if we need to change something, maybe we'll just order a custom converter, maybe. But for now, easiest, cheapest way. And that's what we're all about. So it's kind of like, which one do we try kind of deal here? Is it just a, a wing it situation? Probably. Probably actually what's going to happen. The blue one kind of looks cooler though, if that makes my decision swaying anymore. Alrighty, after talking with Kurt last night, it seems this darker one is uh, between 42, 4400 stall, and this one was like 4000. So we're going to put the bigger one in for now, try that. But we're going to use this one for now because we have a small cube engine with a big turbo. So it's going to be hard to get on the converter, which means I want to put the looser one in just so I don't have to uh, mess around with a tight converter. Every car I've owned so far that has a converter in it, it's always been too tight. So we'll try one that's too loose. Maybe it'll get on it faster. Like Tokyo's car is awesome because it gets on the converter in like two seconds. Okay, here goes nothing. Should slide in a couple clicks. There's a piece of gum on it or something. It's all bolted together now. It looks a lot more solid than it did before because this big beefy bell housing seems to be holding it all together. We do have to get some uh, bolts and spacers because there is a big air gap there. You only want like an eighth of an inch air gap between that. So we probably have to get like a three eight spacer between there with some three eight bolts. So hopefully that ends up working out for us. Now, what I'm gonna try and do is put this in the car by myself because I want to uh, see how the intake's gonna work on there. I might have to get the grinder and like not the app because Tokyo has the app, but Tokyo also has my grinder uh, to grind out those back brackets for the motor plates. So I might have to do that as well. So I was about to put this in and then I got a message from someone saying, hey, I've got a bunch of mandrel bends here. Do you want them 50 bucks? And I was like, okay. What's your address? Here's 50 bucks. I didn't know how big the boxes were or how many bends there was. It was just like, okay. Cause I'm always looking for stuff to fab with. And uh, we got all this for 50 bucks. It's all mild steel, but it's all mandrel bends. So I'm sure we can use it somewhere. <laughs> and not just this box. It was this box too. So uh, yeah, there's a couple dollars in exhaust here. And I thought the boxes were gonna be way smaller than this and I brought the Hellcat. I still managed to fit it in there, but it was pretty tight. There we go, our motor's back in place with our trans connected and the mid plate connected. So I had to notch out the mid plate like a little bit down here on the bottom. And we still have to build some brackets all the way down here somewhere to mount this thing. I don't like how it's not up on the frame where this one, the last one was, but uh, it is what it is. I can almost build it off the freaking K member, but I'll probably just cut these mounts off right here and then weld like long plates down to the bottom that are pretty thick. Same thing you can see on this side over here. We still have to get our angle on the trans, so this might actually touch afterwards, but not sure. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna stick our intake manifold on here, see how it sits compared to that inlet. I'm just gonna plop the GoPro right here, I guess. Probably where it wants to be. Do 
Dude, that's pretty friggin' close. We should get the throttle body as well, I guess. <laughs> that is so damn close right now. It's not dead center though. So there might have to be a cut put in this and adjust it a little tiny bit, unfortunately. Look at how close that is. We might get away with just putting a nice little coupler on there. Just a nice four inch coupler if we got a nice flexi one. And run two, uh, two T-bolt clamps on that. That might actually just work right there like that. And then our uh, fuel rail in the front here, which is really convenient. Uh, you're not allowed to mount these on the firewall and you're not allowed to run fuel lines along the bell housing. They have to be outside the chassis. So it'll probably come down here along this uh, frame rail on the outside of that. Now I've totally edited portion of this video already and I noticed that the quality with this lighting in the garage kind of sucks. We need some daylight bulbs in here or some LED strips. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is I'm going to put this front clip back on, get our radiator and our turbo and see kind of where we can put stuff before I start making too many solid plans on what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll throw the headers on as well. That way we can get a good idea of how everything's gonna be mapped out in this engine. Well now, this is just me toying with ideas here. I do have a little stand that I had built before. It's just on a flex plate down there and it comes up and then there's a little flange that I bolt to the bottom of the turbo. So this is what I was contemplating. Um, I'd have to rearrange this housing a different way, I believe. But I don't know if I wanna put the turbo on this side because the alternator goes right there. I have to like squeeze down past the alternator and I don't know if I wanna pie cut that close and then It'd be cool if the turbo could stick somewhere like that. Because I think that looks badass. Now obviously we're going to have the race cover turbo. This isn't going to be the one we're using. And then it's going to have a T6 backside as well. So it might be even a bit larger. Um, the majority of the real estate is like over here that I can use. And then I just have the water pump temporarily put there. But it looks like that fitting is close to the friggin' pulley. Holy. Anyways, that's our setup. It looks kind of cool. I'm pretty happy with it, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna put this right here for a second. There was a big pipe that uh, went to the old turbo right here. I wonder if this, I think this went like this. No, it won't fit in our headers. I'd like to make my own piping anyways, because I don't, I don't like this one. All right, so I think I was planning on laying the radiator like flat beside both of these things. My only other option, but I'd have to run a scavenge pump, is jam the turbo way up in here in this open space down there in front of all of this. So I'm gonna test fit it in there. I don't know if my mount over here is gonna go low enough, but I'll test fit it in there and then I'll see what the results are. All right, people, that's where I'm gonna leave you with this video. It's been like a whole GoPro video. Let me know how it is in the end. Um, this is kind of how we're gonna leave it. I did take the turbo out. I haven't completely decided where I wanna put it, but I would love to put it down there. I have to be mindful that I do wanna run a radiator just because if I wanna run streetcar class stuff, I need a radiator. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace easy and get that V.